In the last video, we saw how to make a primary chord. In this video, we're going to learn how to make the pendant chords that hang off of the primary chord, and then further the subsidiary chords that hang off of pendant chords. So each one of these kipu chords can vary in a couple of ways and signify information in that way. First of all, we have ply direction, just like we saw with the pendant chords. And so you can either signify uh, one binary category in an S direction, or another binary category in the Z direction. Another uh, way that you can signify information using the chord alone is with the color. So you can have solid colored chords like this one, this white one, uh, over on the side, it's a subsidiary. Or you could have uh, mixed color chords like these two pendant chords that I have attached to the primary chord. Now I'm going to come a little closer so you can see the distinction in these mixed color chords. So this mixed color chord is called a modeled chord. And it's called modeled because it's kind of a random variation of the red and the white in there. This one right here is called a barber pole color combination chord. And it's called that just because it looks kind of like a barber pole uh, outside of an old-timey barber shop. Now I'm going to show you how to make all of these. Pendant and subsidiary chords were normally thinner than primary chords, so I am only going to use two strands of yarn to make all of these chords instead of the three I used for the primary chords. First, to demonstrate a solid colored chord, I use one meter of white yarn folded in half to make a subsidiary chord. Since I only have one meter of yarn, I'll use it to make a subsidiary chord, but you could easily tie two one meter strands of the same color together at the top to form a longer pendant chord or just fold two meters uh, strand in half. Remember again that if I roll my spindle in the counterclockwise direction, I'll get an S-ply chord, which could signify one category. And if I roll it in the clockwise direction, I'll get a Z-plied chord, which could signify another category. Since our primary chord was S-plied, I'll make this chord a Z-plied chord. Once we have enough tension, we'll fold the cord in half and then let it come back on itself. You can see it is nicely plied in the Z direction. We'll tie a knot, snip off the scraps hanging off the end, and we've got a finished solid colored cord. Next, let's learn how to make a barber pole cord. Remember, these cords look like barber poles outside of barber shops when you're finished. To make a barber pole cord, loop two one meter cords of different colors together, with one of the cords tied like I have this purple one here, so I can attach the spindle at the end. The white cord goes out of the frame here, but I'm holding it down on the other side with a rock again, so it builds tension when I spin the spindle. Note that I'm rolling the spindle in the counterclockwise direction, so the cord will be plied in the S direction this time.
Once you have enough tension, place your finger at the center of the two colors and fold the yarn in half, just like we have done for the solid colored cords. Let the cords work themselves together like I'm doing here. Then, when everything looks good, tie off the end. Now we have a beautiful S-ply barber pole pendant cord. Now let's make a modeled cord. Remember, modeled cords are cords that have multiple colors seemingly randomly mixed within them. You can make a modeled cord by tying two 1 meter yarn segments of different colors together like I have here. Then we'll do the same thing we just did with the solid cord. And we'll also ply it in the S direction, so counterclockwise. When you have enough tension in your cord that it starts pulling back on itself like it's doing now, fold it in half and let the yarn work itself together. You can see the colors are nicely mixed together in an S-ply. Now tie it off. You have a finished modeled cord.